together like sardines in a can, and the chicks' feet were often so matted with hardened droppings that they resembled clogs. There's also the psychological impact to a crowded nest. Like all intelligent creatures, after a certain time they want their own space. I decided to build a separate nest from an old cabinet which was languishing in the workshop. I also decided to insulate it and provide heating to facilitate winter breeding. Lighting would also be necessary because the available light from the skylight was too low. Project Breathing Space was born. Before this could be achieved, the nest had to be built. Let's start off with the insulation. The whole of the cabinet is covered in expanded polystyrene ceiling tiles and is then covered with a layer of thermal fleece. The materials are fixed down with 15mm tacks. The insulation is important not only for maintaining a comfortable environment for the hens in the winter, but also to prevent the nest from becoming dangerously hot during the summer. There's also another reason which I'll address in a moment. The floors are made of plywood and rest on 20mm nails or tacks driven two thirds of the way in. Two methods of heating were considered, the underfloor system and the individual system. The underfloor system will be described first as it was the one adopted. Beneath the lower nest in each column is a heating compartment which consists of a 100 watt mains bulb lying in a bowl. The bowl acts as a reflector and shines light on the underside of the nest floor. The nest becomes warm and after a time the heat migrates to the upper nest and warms that as well. The bowls rest on expanded polystyrene ceiling tiles which are covered with aluminium foil. The tiles are separated from the floor of the compartments by one centimetre plastic spacers. All this ensures a maximum transfer of heat upwards. Fixed to the wall of one of the compartments is a thermostat and a dimmer switch is fitted to the wall of the utility compartment below. All these items, including the two bulbs, are wired in series. The circuit is connected to the mains via a timer and a standard 3-pin plug fitted with a 3-amp fuse. The system must be installed by a qualified electrician. This method is effective and reliable, but its success is directly proportional to the quality of insulation applied to the cabinet and the thinness of the nest floor. It will not work on an uninsulated cabinet as the discrepancy in temperature between the upper and lower nests will be too great. With the arrangement described here, the discrepancy has never been greater than 4 degrees C. The original heating system 
which was abandoned on grounds of cost, consists of fitting 300 watt quartz halogen tubes in each of the nests and supplying them with a low voltage in order to give around 15 watts each. This system never actually reached the testing stage. The lighting of the nest is particularly tricky, not from a technical point of view, but from that of the birds. Although most hens will tolerate or even welcome a bright light in their nests during the rearing phase, this is not the case during the incubation phase. Some budgies have poor vision and this is due to the rearing in poor light. Shortly after the chicks open their eyes, a sufficient amount of light is necessary for the correct development of the visual cortex but darkness is required for sleep. Clearly there's a conflict here, but a suitable lighting regime has been developed. The system utilises 12 volt, 4 watt bulbs supplied by 6 volt stabilised DC power supply, capable of supplying at least 1 amp. The power to each bulb can be set at any one of four different levels by means of a 5 phase switch. The fifth setting being off. Level 1 is basically a pilot light and its purpose is to indicate to the hens that a lamp actually exists in the nest, thus ensuring that she isn't too startled when the light is increased to level 2 later on. The basic design philosophy of the nest was individuality. Each one had to be instantly recognisable. The consequences of a hen returning to her nest to find another bird on her eggs can be quite serious. Most hens prefer the bed to be right against the front wall. But whatever design is adopted, the bed must be completely surrounded by a 5 cm guard fence or rail to prevent the chicks from wandering off too soon. The first nest to be completed was number 2A, in the top right hand corner of the cabinet. The bed is positioned right against the front wall. The green container at the back is a water trough which will be covered in another program. The light is the interior lamp from a Rover Metro car and is fitted with a 5 watt bulb. As can be seen the bed is made from a solid plank of wood which extends across the whole width of the nest which is 12 inches wide. It is divided into two sections to give the bird more security. The dividing wall has been substantially reduced in height over time due to the use of poor quality wood. The nest below is similar except the bed is pushed further into the room. This leaves a small space for the older chicks to move to when the bed becomes too crowded. Again a water trough is installed at the back for the convenience of the hens but it was also used by the chicks when they became older. The lamp is a 4 watt 12 volt bulb installed in a standard MES socket available from electronics stores. Number 1A in the top left hand corner of the cabinet is not a breeding nest but a retirement home for one of my hens who had become infertile due to old age. A water tray and cuttlefish were also provided. The lamp is a rear number plate lamp from a Roma Metro car and is fitted with a 10 watt bulb. The rock at the back was a standard provision for all the nests and is included to augment the usual cuttlefish bone. The nest below consists of a simple plastic plant pot inserted into a small cardboard box. The illumination for the nest is provided by a 6 volt bulb and is fitted to the front wall. Initially this nest didn't have a bed as such. The laying area consisted of a circular cutout in a rubber mat. The ribbed nature of the mat was ideal for preventing the eggs straying too far. It was curious how the hen instinctively laid her eggs in the ringed area as opposed to anywhere else in the nest. This may be due to the fact that that area was warmer. This is the same nest with the addition of a small box which was provided as a retreat for the chicks when they became too old to be covered by the hen. Notice how she's using the facilities provided and totally at ease with her offspring being in a separate enclosure. 
The box is made of cardboard and is covered in plastic packing tape to prevent the bird from chewing round the edges. It's preferable to use a wooden box as Snowy later demonstrated. So, how do these nests compare to standing nest boxes? Well, the first observation is that the chicks are much cleaner. Also, the rich environment in extra space helps to promote their physical and emotional development. The fact that the birds use the space and facilities of these nests to the full indicates that the provision of such facilities is both worthwhile and desirable. Take a look at this scene. The bird in the picture is the older chick who is somehow challenging the authority of her mother. It may be something she said or done or her general behaviour. But whatever the cause, her mother asserts her authority and the chick goes to her room. Notice how the mother almost lurches at the youngster as she submissively walks towards the box. This sort of parental control is impossible in a standard nest box. Take a look at this next scene. The older chicks generally rev their engines from time to time in preparation for flying the nest. The older chick, she too, is stimulated by her younger sibling into flapping her wings. It's a powerful semi-automatic reaction, which to a very young chick at close quarters can be very frightening. Each of these nests work well, with the birds accepting them with no hesitation. However, the separate enclosure in this particular nest made the management of lighting less critical than in the open nests. Also, with the chicks out of sight, the hen will feel more at ease during those short periods when she's away from the nest. For these reasons, all my future nests are going to be based on this design, with the inclusion of an additional enclosure for the hen herself. Other improvements will include sturdier wiring to the lamps, as the existing cable was susceptible to attack from birds. Also, the power connectors and timers will be housed in a separate cabinet. A water supply will be installed in all the nests and a humidity system is being developed to replace the existing one which failed. Well I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Avian World. Until the next time, goodbye.
Thank <laughs> you.